Hi, welcome to the Wildlife Conservation Career Series. Um, so in this last week, I've been getting a lot of messages about um, graduate school. Um, so master's programs. And I totally relate with you on this question because um, it's so open-ended and there's not really step A, B, C um, to do this. It can vary a lot by program. So I'm just gonna give you a general outline of what a master's program is and what it can look like, um, knowing that there's a lot of variations around this. Um, but especially in um, biology, this is what you can expect for a general pathway. Um, okay, so when you are in a master's program, so a lot of times this is around a specific research question or your thesis. So there's uh, either the non-thesis or the thesis option typically. Um, I'm assuming, and I always suggest, if you take my courses, I would uh, suggest and recommend the thesis option because the point of a lot of time graduate school is learning the research process. And so that's why you're gonna wanna do that thesis option. So when it comes to deciding your project, this can be a scary, part because you were just starting in your career likely so you don't know what ideas there are and to me that was the most like terrifying part because you feel like you should come with uh, I'm gonna work on this and blah 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 but if you don't know what's already been done and there should be no expectations that you know all of that how do you know what options there are to work on right so this is what I, you should ask so there's two things so there's some um, graduate programs that are like already very well established. And so they probably have a um, big uh, student body already within that graduate program with the head, which is like the advisor, which is a professor that has a robust research program and several PhD and master's students. Um, and typically a lab manager, maybe some research assistants. So uh, five to 10 people group that works towards this professor's major research initiatives. So yes, in that case, it's likely you're gonna be applying for a um, master's program that will support those goals. So it's not necessarily your, your new, unique idea. You'll save that for your PhD, right? That's when you get a, you are expected to design your own studies. But at a master's level, you're not expected to do that. And I would shy away from programs that expect you to, to do that because you're, part, you're, you're there to learn that process. So for example, when I take students in my Four Elephants program, um, they reach out, of course we build that relationship, see if this is a good fit, and then I give them some project ideas. Because one of the things that you want to do is you want to have interest and passion for what you're gonna be dedicating your life to for the next two to three years. Um, you don't have to know all the details, but it's really helpful if you have some kind of guide. So again, this is either going to be um, somebody's program that's well established, and you're gonna really know a lot of their research already. So you could be applying to doing part of that large program. So this could come, they might have gotten like a, a grant or something to support this project, which then is your master's. So it's typically a smaller piece of a larger project. Um, so that's the, you know, if the idea is already established and some programs are like, you'll be doing this and it will contribute to this. But these are the questions that you should be asking of different graduate advisors and programs that you're interested in, right? How is my thesis project defined? Is it set? Um, do you want me to find it? Or is it a mix of the two? These are really important. And this will give you an idea too on the level of mentorship that you're going to get along uh, the process along in your process. Um, so that's probably the bi biggest thing is your project. What are you doing? But I also want to encourage you to not just look at the project, right? You're using this time to build your relationships, explore the field, join memberships, go to conferences. So I would have to say I have definitely paid out of pocket for way more, probably like 75% of any conferences I attended. Yeah, that's crazy, um, but that's what we do. And I also have to say that each one I attended 
I got something, there's my daughter in the background. I got something really, really useful out of it. And it was never, ever a waste of money. Um, so I know that that's a lot. And you think about how I'm going to pay for that. So don't get bogged down by that. Um, I have a whole nother um, lesson about money in the financial part. But this, again, we're going back to your master's. What does it look like? It looks like you exploring these options, building these relationships, going to these conferences and seeing what other people are doing for two things, right? You want to see what you really want to do with this master's degree. You're, you're not just doing it to fill time. You want to have a plan for after your master's degree before it's over. So this is the time you're going to be out there and market yourself and um, offer your services so that when at the end of your master's, you have a plan for after. Okay. And at these places, this is, this is where you're going to care about jobs and build those relationships um, and, and see what else is out there. Hugely important. So your thesis, the academics, that part of it, absolutely. But to really take the most, make the most of the master's program, it's all those other pieces that you're going to be exposed to. Going to all the seminars, really getting, um, having conversations with people in your university, not just professors in your de department, but others, right? Their paths, um, their ideas, what they see. So immerse yourself in this knowledge and exploring um, as well as focusing on your research project. So um, as in timeline, um, you know, a lot of times people will have this conception that master's programs are two years. Um, and that's possible. It's, it's, it's tight. You know, I've had a recent master's student do that in two years. And it's a lot, um, just because it's a lot to really do a robust study. And um, one of my requirements is when you write your thesis, one of the, the it's, it's in um, publication style. So when you're done, we're going to publish that within six to six months to a year after you graduate. So to do that effectively, that takes some time. So give yourself some grace here and knowing that it will could take two and a half to three years. Um, mine took three years. Um, and, you know, looking back, that was the best, that was the best thing uh, for that step in my career. And I have to say it was during that time I was really able to, um, to look at different career paths after and really have a more focused direction for after my, my uh, master's. So, you know, I'm an elephant reproductive physiologist and endocrinologist, not just elephant, uh, all wildlife, but I specialize in elephants. But my master's was on pigs. <laughs> so, you know, I'm uh, from Nebraska, and I went to the University of Nebraska in Lincoln for my, my master's, and I was in the animal science reproductive physiology department. At the same time, I was working um, at a zoo, managing their reproductive biology program. Um, so it was nice. So I was within a zoo setting and doing all that, but then I was also doing my master's. It was really good to get a skill set that I had more practice on, more opportunity because of the larger sample size, right? So, um, so don't be so concerned about species at this point. Um, you're looking at skill sets and you're looking at this as an opportunity to grow and explore and you're really building that research experience process. Um, last thing I'll say is when you're reaching out to graduate schools um, and mentors, of course you can just re apply to all of the, the schools you're interested in, but it will really make a difference of you getting accepted is if you've already pinpointed a mentor or an academic advisor and they already know of you and your interests so that when your application comes across um, the system that you've already built this and you're looking out for it. Some of these positions can be extremely competitive, um, which is not to deter you from doing it, still apply. But again, during undergrad and those other times you should build it, be building those relationships. So when you find a mentor that you want to work with, um, that that's already in process of being established. Um, yeah, that was a lot. Um, but it's such a, like a, it can be an intimidating process because it's not really clear and it's not outlined and you can get so much different information. So I'm just sharing you real life, my experience, um, of how that process works. And I said that was the last thing, but I'm gonna tell you one more thing, <laughs> especially for um, biology. 
that typically it works that the department that you're applying for um, has funding then for you to act as a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship, which means then your tuition is normally waived and then you'll also get a, a monthly living stipend. So that means you don't have to pay for graduate school. Awesome. Um, so that's typically available for in the biological sciences. Maybe not all programs, but any program I've looked at, um, that's how that's worked. So that's a bonus. You'll have more freedom for your project choice if you are able to bring in additional funding for a project you're interested in. Um, you know, some of these projects are really well defined and funded, but that's okay, right? That's awesome. You're gonna um, just embrace whatever experience you get, and no matter what, you'll learn something of value from it if you immerse yourself in that experience and look at it as really comprehensive of building yourself, exploring the field, building networks, um, enjoying the process. So that's a bit about uh, master's programs, graduate school. Um, Next, we'll talk about PhD and postdoc. I'm not gonna get into where and all of that because I don't think there is a one size fits all for that. Another uh, talk on that has a, at another time. Message me if you have questions, comments, and love to help you as always. Bye.